All right, folks, we're at LR Workshop. Welcome to the beautiful British summer. We have here at the moment thunderstorm coming on in. I've got my brolly though, so don't worry. I thought seeing as uh, the Grenadier interior has been launched, then I would go outside to talk about the inside. What a revelation. I think that interior is spectacular. In this video, I'm basically going to just chew the fat about what I think about the interior. And let me know in the comments what you think about the interior as well, and with, whether if you agree with me or not. I think the interior is great. I don't think it's perfect, but there's some really nice, fresh things in there that made it... They've really thought about what they're, what they're doing. Now, the first thing that caught my eye that I maybe had a bit of a reservation about was that, like, dial knob in down by the down by the gear stick area. And I was thinking, oh, God, they've done a terrain response system. But it was good to learn that it was um, just for controlling the touchscreen if you were at, like, muddy fingers or gloves or something. So that actually is quite fresh from that perspective. Um, I wonder how robust it is, whether it's going to get kicked off. Because that's one of the things I noted about the dashboard. It's very vertical, a bit more like the Puma central part of the dash. Which is a good thing, because a lot of modern cars, they've got this huge dashboard and, like, you know, area with the gear stick and cup holders and that kind of stuff that kind of blocks one side of the car to the other. You don't want that in a four-wheel drive. If you're tipped up in a ditch and you can't get out the driver's door, you need to be able to cross over to the passenger side. So... Having that kind of like flat area and then vertical area, I think, is a, re oh, it's not really it's a really good idea because it allows you to transfer between seats quite easily. So that's something I really like. The dashboard is yet to be seen. They've got that big screen there, which we don't know what's on it yet, but it's refreshing. And they've actually agreed with me in one of my 14 Things video about not investing in kind of like mega all singing or dancing software system they're just going to let you use your phone, use your sat-nav, because that's what we use these days. So I'm quite curious about what's going to actually be on that. It might have some, like, I assume it's going to have diagnostics. I hope it's going to have diagnostics. And also, potentially, like, some kind of, you know, so you can see what's been switched on, potentially on a screen. Maybe it's, it's probably going to have some, like, angle tilting, you know, inclinometer and stuff like that on it. Um, the dashboard itself, where you view, like, speed and revs and things like that, there's a bit of a gap down by the steering wheel, but I hope it's not on the central screen because that would be annoying. A bit like the new Mini. Um, yeah, I'm hoping you've got some kind of like driver controlled. But in general, though, I think the, the, the interior is probably... This is probably the vehicle to help Luddites and other Land Rover owners like me transition to the modern world. You know, it's got electric windows, it's got a touch screen, but at the same time, it's got a lot of analog switches that make it really tactile. I mean, and I think that's very, very shrewd, and it works on two levels. One is, you've got the kind of, yeah, Luddites like me who are kind of interested in engineering, closet engineers, shall we say, or, or armchair engineers. Um, and I think there's a lot of people interested in Land Rovers who have a similar mentality. And uh, of the engineering spectrum, aerospace is up there. Maybe like one notch down from NASA. You know, aerospace, it's like it's got the quality of materials, the precision of components, you know, the planning and the safety. At least that's from the outside what we appear. That, that's what it appears to be. And they've brought that into the interior. Like who... Whoever is a closet engineer does not dream of having a cockpit. It's just, it's just there. It's just laid out in front of you. It's got the switches that you want to press, you want to touch. I think that is utterly unreal. That is exactly what every child would want. I designed like a, did like a rocket ship for my kids. And you could buy like, I had this vision of buying like old aircraft, you know, instrument panels and things out of like a tornado and stuff. You can buy them on eBay with like switches and you know flip the thing up and the switch down and stuff i thought that'd be great turned out to be a bit expensive so they had to settle with um, some discovery 2 switches but bringing a cockpit-esque style of switches into the interior i think is fantastic so it works for the people like me on that one level who want to love a cockpit 
I think on the flip side, if you take the people, let's say, that are like more fad orientated, more trend orientated, trendy people that tend to spend a lot of money on new stuff, they will, they've probably been for a number of years where they've had touch screens, touch screens, touch screens after touch screen. And they're going to look at this and go, oh, that's quite cute and retro. I get it. And they'll be attracted to it as well. So it's kind of hitting that middle ground where it's going to attract people from both ends of the market, I think, which is, which is great. Naturally, it's had to have a touch screen because people, I think, expect that as a minimum if you're taking people from, from that end of the market. But what I like about the touch screen is they've not done it as just like a cheap little tablet thing. It's actually quite, it's like half the size of a Tesla screen. They've actually gone fully in there with a the touch screen. Um, I wouldn't know how much I would use it, or as I say, I don't know what it's gonna, what's going to be on it at the moment. But I'm, I'm at least glad that they've gone full. It is a modern vehicle. You can see that. If they'd done a cheap, yeah, cheap small tablet uh, screen, there, people wouldn't have seen it as a modern vehicle. So I'm glad they've actually they've gone like full, fully into that. Uh, from the switches, we can see it's got AC, which is a modern requirement. It's got electric windows, which. I would have preferred manual, but as long as they're reliable, it doesn't matter, actually. It actually doesn't matter. Um, as long as the door looms don't, like, split every time, you open, you know, after a year of opening and closing the doors, that's fine by me, if they, as long as they work. Heated controls, dobs and niles, exactly what you want. It's got heated heated front screen. It's got that parking assist thing, which I assume is, like, the beeping noise or whatever. Um, what else has it got on there? Yeah, a couple, a couple other little trinkets and things on there. But the fact as well, the roof console. Now, naturally, this is one thing that enthusiasts do with their vehicles is fit roof consoles. I've never done it, but it's it's a big thing that people do. It makes it more cockpit-esque style. You can hear the, th the thunder. It makes it more cockpit style-esque, which is amazing. Having a roof console, it, you know, it, up there makes it just the, the awesome toy you want to play with. I completely appreciate why they've put all the off-road controls up there. And it kind of it kind of hits me where I think about off-roading. Um, I think that to tackle off-roading properly, you need to stop, consider your obstacle, select the right options, and then tackle it. If it was there in front of you with a dashboard and you had like a quick switch change mode, or if the vehicle does it for you, uh, you know, a lot of modern vehicles, it's like, you know, there's the obstacle, press the th accelerator, get through it, and the vehicle will do the rest. This is like saying, you know, stop, you're going to have to look up, select your modes, and then tackle the obstacle. That's exactly the method methodology of off-roading that I, I believe in, which, is, which I think is a great subtlety of why they put it out there, because you have to take your eyes off the road to use the switches. I think that's brilliant for the diff locks and things like that. It's one of the things which I find annoying about land cruises and freewheeling hubs is I, to get out of your vehicle and, and go and change the hubs. I think hubs can do more damage if you, for example, forget to engage them and think you're in a four-wheel drive when you're not because you just moved the lever. Or if, if you accidentally unlock one and leave half the diff spinning. Incredible like disaster can come from that. I love the Land Rover diff lock. You just, you're in the cab, fair enough, you slow down, but you, you, you put the diff lock in and away you go. So that's kind of how I feel about the controls. I love the fact that it, you've got to take an extra kind of glance and, and, and consider. You're not just going to blitz on through. It's not the vehicle's not saying, I'm going to take everything that you throw, throw at this vehicle. And um, so I really appreciate that in the switch gear. The leather steering wheel, I actually don't like the leather. I don't like leather in cars. My second Defender, when I bought it, had a leather steering wheel. And I got rid of that thing as quick as I bloody well could. I, I, get, I get it. The guys come from designing yachts and I guess premium yachts. And I, I think what they're trying to do with the, the interior, you can see it from the seats. Supposedly you know, the seats are Recaro, um, quite comfy. I'm assuming that there is a Grenadier spec. spec. There's no base or higher spec it's all going to be one spec so you get what was in there um, you don't pay for extra upgrades so you're going to get comfortable seats to begin with i'm getting the impression that because it's going to be 45,000 retail for you know members of the public including that thereabouts i would assume they're trying to add some premium features in to warrant the premium price now with toby the designer coming from yachts which he was at the more premium end of the market he i think it's an element of saying well 
when you're at the premium end of the yacht market, what do people pay for? You know, you've got stainless, stainless steel, you've got like hardwood, maybe like decking and stuff like that on the yachts. What's the equivalent in automotive terms? Leather. People pay extra for leather. So I think they've taken that, that premium material and brought it into the cockpit for that reason. I don't really like the leather and on the hand, handbrake as well. I'm not that keen on it. I don't really, I don't care that much, but I'd rather have, I'd rather pay to have a plasticky, just like bog standard steering wheel. I don't, there's a word I'm thinking of about the sort of people that fit leather to their vehicles and I wouldn't really want leather in one of my vehicles. But there we go. The glove box. The glove box on the passenger side and the rail just in front. It's identical to a Land Cruiser 70 series. It's utterly identical with the handle. They must have used the same supplier. The, the, the latch mechanism is just identical, which is fine because it's quite a good cubby box, actually. Having the handle in the front there is important for passengers so they can hold on to something when they're, you know, because the, the, the driver, you've got the steering wheel that's in front of you. You can hold on to that and brace yourself. Passenger needs something the same as well. The second row seats look quite interesting. They look identical to a Puma's. They look so identical. What I really want to know about the Puma, what the, those second row seats is, when they fold down, how much can you sleep in the back? That's what I really want to know. I want to see how they fold down. Looking at the load space in the back, there's obviously a lot of plastic around there with the wheel arches. So it's not got that kind of u necessarily utility feel like we're used to with the Defender with just like metal and square edges and stuff. I couldn't quite tell from the perspective of the photo how much space was in the load area, but the tie down rings, I think are a great feature. Yeah, so the load area, it's got a bit of plastic and stuff, you know it's gonna get damaged. Yeah, it's just not, not too fussed about that. But as long as you can fold the seats down or flat or just out the way to get more space in there, then I think that'll be a really usable vehicle. I really do. I love all the grab handles and stuff built in. You know, solid grand panels, it's exactly what you need off-roading because you're swinging around. It's quite easy to bang your head if you're not paying attention um, as a passenger. Da, 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 da. The plugs in the footwells, it's just brilliant. I hope that they've at least got some kind of slope in the footwell and then the drain plug is at like a lower point in a little bit of a sump, at least so that it'll, you just take the plug out and it will naturally drain. If it's flat like a Defender, the Defender doesn't actually drain out completely. So I hope the plug has, um, has, uh, is designed like that. The other great feature I think, which is just totally fresh, is that toot button for cyclists. It's a very kind of European mentality because we get a lot of different road users on our roads in Europe. So you, you know, people are having to share the different space. You may not get it as much in America. But you do get it in places like Africa and Asia. It's t you know, there's less pavements in those countries, so you get tons of people on the road. But the concept of having a separate horn, it reminded me of the episode of The Simpsons when Homer designs a car for his half-brother's um, car company. And he was like, there need to be horn buttons everywhere. And they all need to play La Cucaracha. da 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 <laughs> so I'm half hoping that it's going to be something. I'm curious what the sound would be but like. If, it's, if, if the horn sound on that toot button is going to be that, that would be amazing. And I did wonder as well, by having a big fat red button, what if it was programmable? You could program it either, put in your own horn sound, or but just have this like, like one press button that would do like, it would just like lower tyre pressures or engage all the diff locks. That would be great, wouldn't it? I'm going to have to put the, put me brolly back up. And then there's the additional fuse switches up in the centre console. They seem to have like a 300 amp and a 25 amp and a 100 amp and stuff like that. I can only, I'm very curious about how that's going to work with fitting the accessories. I assume it's all pre-wired in down to some kind of like terminal block in the engine bay or maybe under the dashboard somewhere. Um, I assume they're thinking of things like spotlights and winch. I'm very curious to see how that's going to work. The exciting thing for me is I'm going to Goodwood Festival of Speed in a few days' time. The Grenadier team are going to be there. I'm hoping I can get my hands on this bloody thing and I just want to crawl underneath. So hopefully I'll be able to film some stuff. I'll bring it to this channel. Um, that's really exciting. And this interior has made me even more excited. Hopefully we're going to be able to sit in it. 
far as test drives go, there have been a few people on forums have been getting uh, invites to test drives or basically sit in the passenger seat while uh, an instructor carries, drives you around in the, one of the 2B prototypes, the, the development test mules. Not everyone's getting that email, naturally. I haven't had one. Um, I think what's going on here is they've used, basically they've done some customer profiling. And if you're the sort of person that buys new vehicles and you, you intimated that fact when you signed up, they may have also been able to do some you know, cross-checking of customer data with their relationships with BMW and Mercedes to see have you, you know, bought a brand new BMW or Mercedes before. You're the sort of person that buys brand new vehicles. Then those are the sorts of people will, that will probably be getting uh, test drives, to be honest. So, which I can completely appreciate. They want this thing to be a success. They want people with money to actually buy it. I have no history of ever buying a brand new car, although I'm seriously thinking about it with a grand ear. I'm really, really thinking about it. It, it. When it comes out next year, you can start reserving the slot from October, so it said in the video, but it depends what finances are like next year, but I'm really thinking about buying one or getting one, that'll be a lease or something, you know, that's something like that. But yeah, if you've got a test drive, then let me know in the comments and uh, whether you think it's got anything to do with your past history or financial status or, or demographic or whatever whatever you think may be the, the golden ticket that gets you onto these um, test drive kind of experience experience things. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of the interior. I think it's spectacular. I think it's not perfect, but that's the real world. I'm happy with it. I think there's enough fresh thinking in there and it's got me excited. I just like the way they've tried to change the rule book a bit. In automotive terms, not just utility 4x4s, but automotive terms. Interested to see how comfy the seats are. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a comment, give us a like, subscribe for more Grenadier content and Land River content. Thank you very much. Goodbye, summertime.